consciousness. Consciousness, conscious evolution, on the road to find out. Let consciousness, conscious evolution, on the road to find out. Last updated, Sept 26, 2017. PDF version, 1T3-9 to holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. To find yourself, think for yourself, tilde Socrates. The world is not what we see, but the way we see and what we see with. Fool asks, wise seeks, fool degrades while wise upgrades. For each wise there has to be a fool. For a fool contests while wise introspects. For a fool always will have much to say while wise has much to think. Yogini true Krishna Priya. Where is it located? Where is the universe? Language and custom say that it is outside us. That it is. Out there. But a smattering of scientists know that this cannot be so. That, in fact, everything occurs strictly within our heads. Lanza, Robert. Beyond biocentrism. Evolving your consciousness is the purpose of your existence. Tom Campbell. Ever becoming is endless dying. When consciousness is attached to objects the agony of birth and death never ceases wolf. Mind is a name given to the sum of the states of consciousness. HPB. The human body is the most perfect instrument for the expression of consciousness. Johari, Harish, Joe underscore 8 colon 23 and he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above, ye are of this world, I am not of this world, this consciousness, all is sentient being, grass, trees, land, sun, moon and stars are all mine Dogen, theory of everything, love of truth manly P. Hall, Joe underscore 14 to 6 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Consciousness is the foundational energy of perception. It is the basis upon which we ascension existing beings either evolve or devolve. Our improvement or degeneration is marked by the state or level of our consciousness. Consciousness was a global phenomenon that occurred everywhere in the body, and not simply in our brains. Consciousness, at its most basic, was coherent light. Fritz Albert Pop. McTaggart. Lynn, October 13, 2009. The Field, P. 94. Consciousness, I call it the Spirit of God, Source, Matrix, which is the light of God to Christians. Everything is an illusion and everything is consciousness, without which, there is no illusion of material reality and no further realities of consciousness. Spirituality is equivalent to consciousness quality. Evolving your consciousness is the purpose of your existence, but also how to fulfill that purpose by becoming fearless, humble and compassionate. Campbell Thomas. My Big Toe, Discovery, P. 119. Consciousness is, Consciousness is the ultimate, the final reality. Consciousness is that by the presence of which all things are conscious. Mystery of all mysteries, it is beyond comprehension. Without it nothing can be conscious, no one could think, no being, no entity, no force, no unit could perform any function. Yet consciousness itself performs no function, it does not act in any way, it is a presence, everywhere. And it is because of its presence that all things are conscious in whatever degree they are conscious. Consciousness is not a cause. It cannot be moved or used in any way affected by anything. Consciousness is not the result on anything, nor does it depend on anything. It does not increase or diminish, expand, extend, contract or change, or vary in any way. Although there are countless degrees in being conscious, there are no degrees of consciousness, no planes, no states, no grades, divisions or variations of any sort. It is the same everywhere and in all things, from a primordial nature unit to the supreme intelligence. Consciousness has no properties, no qualities, no attributes, it does not possess, it cannot be possessed. Consciousness never began, it cannot cease to be. Consciousness is, Percival, Thinking in Destiny, page 26. Upgrades are coming, but you can skip a few grades. Think of consciousness as a spiral staircase. 
You are on a certain floor. You can run up the stairs taking them two at a time or you can walk with the crowd. Man is the measure of all things, of the possible, how it is, of the impossible, how it is not. In the individual life are laid the foundations of the universe, and upon each individual artist depend the symmetry and meaning of the constructive whole. This master artist it is who holds the keys of life and death, and whatsoever he shall bind or loose in his consciousness shall be bound or loose throughout the universe. Ilya The Atlantic Monthly, Volume 04, No. 23, September, 1859, Kindle Locations 988 to 991. Consciousness originates from a source of light energy for the purpose of learning. The human biogenetic experiment is consciousness brought forth into the physical by the patterns of sacred geometry that repeat in cycles called time. Reality is about the evolution of consciousness and the alchemy of time. To become fully consciousness is to remember who you are as a being of light, why you are here, and where we are going is dictated by the collective unconscious that creates the programs of realities through which your soul experiences simultaneously. As we move ahead in our evolution, we will begin to see that the electric, spirit energy, body is our primary body and the meat packages for our use on earth when we do our time. God is consciousness. Consciousness is static. Consciousness is the knowing of mind. Knowing is static. Consciousness is the spiritual awareness of being, of all knowing, all power and all presence. Walter Russell, The Secret of Light, page 22. Stones, minerals, rocks, and even chemical atoms are simply organic units in profound lethargy. Everything in the universe, throughout all its kingdoms, is conscious, and is endowed with a consciousness of its own kind and on its own plane of perception. We men must remember, that because we do not perceive any signs which we can recognize of consciousness, say, in stones we have no right to say that no consciousness exists there. See, the third fundamental of the secret doctrine, https colon slash slash theosophytrust.org slash 457 cosmic mind. All things are interconnected, every part of your universe is directly connected to every other part. The description of any part is inseparable from the description of the whole. You cannot move without influencing everything in your universe. You cannot even observe anything without changing the object and even yourself. It is even possible that just thinking about an object can change it in yourself. All the universe is alive. All the universe is interconnected. There is life in everything but with varying degrees of consciousness. Space, time and beyond, Bob Tobin. All that there is and can ever be, or ever transpire, is spearheaded by consciousness. Consciousness is the prime creator inverted exclamation mark broken bar s gift to us, and describes our very existence. Everything is created and triggered by the energy of consciousness. Consciousness is, in turn, imparted by light. Consciousness is disseminated through units known as akash or adamantine particles. A higher dimensional exposition of the phenomenon of holographic universe, by Mohsen Paul Sarfarazzi, PhD yet, this cosmic dust is something more. For every atom in the universe has the potentiality of self-consciousness in it, and is, like the monads of Leibniz, a universe in itself, and for itself. It is an atom and an angel. Blavatsky, HP. The Secret Doctrine, Kindle Location 2367. Consciousness, you are the universe. We are non-local beings having a local experience in space-time. In philosophy, panpsychism is the view that consciousness, mind or soul, psyche, is a universal and primordial feature of all things. It is precisely because the world appears in and is made of infinite, indivisible consciousness that it appears from the perspective of each finite mind to be the same world. It is the same world, because all finite minds are refractions of the same consciousness. It is the sameness of consciousness, which shines in and as each of our minds, that is responsible for the conviction that we all share the same world. In the same way, all the characters in a night dream feel that they share the same world because they are all created by the same dreaming mind. The sameness of the world is the sameness of consciousness. Our shared world is our shared consciousness. The vastness of the universe is the vastness of consciousness. Each finite mind feels that the world is much bigger than itself, and this intuition is true. There is more to the world than an individual mind, 
but this doesn't imply that the world is outside consciousness. When a mind experiences the vastness of the universe, it is experiencing a segment of God's infinite being from its own limited perspective, and it is for this reason that we feel such awe and wonder before nature. Materialists use the intersubjective agreement, the agreement that individual minds share their experience of the same world, as proof that there is an independently existing world outside consciousness. However, that is just an interpretation. This intersubjective agreement can also be used to assert the opposite point of view, namely that the similarity of everybody's experience of the world is an inevitable consequence of the shared nature of our minds at their deepest level. One might argue that it is not possible to choose between these two opposing assertions, both of which use the same evidence, our shared world, as their proof. However, there is a difference between them. The materialist perspective is not grounded in experience. It requires an abstract line of reasoning that presupposes the existence of a reality outside consciousness, although nobody has ever experienced this, nor could they ever experience it. The materialist point of view asserts the reality of that which is never experienced, matter, and denies that which alone is always experienced, consciousness itself. That is the tragedy and the absurdity of the materialist perspective from which humanity is suffering. For centuries our culture has been dominated by the materialist view of reality. It is not necessary to point out the devastating effects of this view. The extent of suffering and conflict in society speaks for itself. If the human race still exists in 500 years time, Hopefully people will look back on this period of materialism just as we now look back on the theories of a flat earth and a geocentric universe that dominated our world culture for centuries. If humanity does not still exist in 500 years time, it will most likely be because materialism prevailed. Humanity cannot survive the materialist paradigm. If our species, and countless others, are to survive, we will have to replace the matter model with a consciousness-only model. If we want to build a model of experience, we have to start on solid ground, that is, we have to start with experience. If we build a paradigm starting with a belief, that belief will inform every aspect of the paradigm, and everything that proceeds from it will simply be an expansion of the fundamental assumption contained within it. Experience must be the ultimate test of reality, and therefore the ultimate science must be the science of experience itself. All there is to experience is mind, and all there is to mind is consciousness. Thus, the ultimate science must be the science of consciousness. The science of consciousness is consciousness's knowledge of itself. Consciousness's knowledge of itself, which is the only knowledge that remains the same at all times, in all circumstances and under all conditions and is, therefore, absolute knowledge or truth, must be the foundation and fountain of all relative knowledge. A culture that is based upon any other understanding is bound in the end to destroy itself, for the ignorance at its heart, the ignoring of reality, will sooner or later rise up and turn people against themselves, their planet and one another. Spira, Rupert. The Nature of Consciousness, Essays on the Unity of Mind and Matter, Kindle Locations 2860-2875, Vidya and Avidya. All manifestation proceeds by the two terms, Vidya and Avidya, the consciousness of unity and the consciousness of multiplicity. They are the two aspects of the Maya, the formative self-conception of the eternal. Unity is the eternal and fundamental fact, without which all multiplicity would be unreal and an impossible illusion. The consciousness of unity is therefore called Vidya, the knowledge. 1 co underscore 8 colon 12 But when ye sin so against the brethren, and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. 2 co underscore 1 colon 12 For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly to you, Lord. Spirit of nature, Paracelsus, plant sense, there is nothing corporeal which has not within itself a spiritual essence, and there is nothing which does not contain a life hidden within. Life is something spiritual, 
Life is not only in that which moves, such as men and animals, but in all things, for what would be a corporeal form without a spirit? The form may be destroyed, but the spirit remains and is living, for it is the subjective life. There are as many spirits and lives as there are bodily forms, therefore there are celestial, infernal, and terrestrial spirits, spirits of human beings, of metals, stones, plants, and sea. The spirit is the life and the balsam within all corporeal things. Beta Serum 4 In some forms life acts slowly for instance, in stones, in others, organized beings, it acts quickly. Each element has its own peculiar living existences, belonging to it exclusively. One. Such existences or beings, living in the invisible elements, are the elemental spirits of nature. Matter is, so to say, coagulated smoke and is connected with spirit by an intermediate principle which it receives from the spirit. This intermediate link between matter and spirit belongs to all three kingdoms of nature. In the mineral kingdom it is called stanner or trughat, two in the vegetable kingdom lepus. Three and it forms, in connection with the vital force of the vegetable kingdom, the premomens, which possesses the highest medicinal properties. For this invisible ethereal body may be resurrected and made visible from the ashes of plants and animals by chemical manipulations. The form of the original body may thus be made to appear and disappear. 6. In the animal kingdom this semi-material body is called evistron, and in human beings it is called the sidereal man. Each living being is connected with a macrocosmos and microcosmos by means of this intermediate element or soul, belonging to the mysterium magnum, from whence it has been received, and whose form and qualities are determined by the quality and quantity of the spiritual and material elements. Paracelsus, Franz Hartmann, everything in the universe, throughout all its kingdoms, is conscious i.e., endowed with a consciousness of its own kind and on its own plane of perception. We men must remember that because we do not perceive any signs, which we can recognize, of consciousness, say, in stones, we have no right to say that no consciousness exists there. There is no such thing as either, dead or blind matter, as there is no blind or unconscious law. These find no place among the conceptions of occult philosophy. The latter never stops at surface appearances, and for it the noumenal essences have more reality than their objective counterparts. The whole order of nature evinces a progressive march towards a higher life. There is design in the action of the seemingly blindest forces. The whole process of evolution with its endless adaptations is a proof of this. The immutable laws that weed out the weak and feeble species, to make room for the strong, and which ensure the survival of the fittest, though so cruel in their immediate action, all are working toward the grand end. The very fact that adaptations do occur, that the fittest do survive in the struggle for existence, shows that what is called unconscious nature is in reality an aggregate of forces. The mind of the universe and its immutable law. The universe manifests periodically for purposes of the collective progress of the countless lives, the outbreathings of the one life, in order that through the ever becoming, every cosmic atom in this infinite universe, passing from the formless and intangible, through the mixed natures of the semi-terrestrial, down to matter in full generation, and then back again, may, reascend at each new period. The reincarnationists and believers in karma alone dimly perceive that the whole secret of life is in the unbroken series of its manifestations, whether in, or apart from, the physical body. HTTP colon slash slash www.phxaltlodge.org slash intro dot htm. The birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. Trees have memories, experience pain, and nurse their children. But trees might be among our luscious metaphors and sense-making frameworks for knowledge precisely because the richness of what they say is more than metaphorical. They speak a sophisticated silent language, communicating complex information via smell, taste, and electrical impulses. This fascinating secret world of signals is what German forester Peter Ball Levin explores in The Hidden Life of Trees. Neighboring trees, scientists found, help each other through their root systems, either directly, by intertwining their roots, or indirectly, by growing fungal networks around the roots that serve as a sort of extended nervous system connecting separate trees. If this weren't remarkable enough, these arboreal mutualities are even more complex. Trees appear able to distinguish their own roots from those of other species and even of their own relatives. Why are trees such social beings? Why do they share food with their own species and sometimes even go so far as to nourish their competitors? The reasons are the same as for human communities, there are advantages to working together. A tree is not a forest. On its own, a tree cannot establish a consistent local climate. It is at the mercy of wind and weather. But together, 
Many trees create an ecosystem that moderates extremes of heat and cold, stores a great deal of water, and generates a great deal of humidity. And in this protected environment, trees can live to be very old. To get to this point, the community must remain intact no matter what. If every tree were looking out only for itself, then quite a few of them would never reach old age. Regular fatalities would result in many large gaps in the tree canopy, which would make it easier for storms to get inside the forest and uproot more trees. The heat of summer would reach the forest floor and dry it out. Every tree would suffer. Every tree, therefore, is valuable to the community and worth keeping around for as long as possible. And that is why even sick individuals are supported and nourished until they recover. Next time, perhaps it will be the other way round, and the supporting tree might be the one in need of assistance. A tree can be only as strong as the forest that surrounds it. Source The Seven Jewels of Wisdom The Seven Jewels of Wisdom Video The Seven Jewels of Wisdom Reincarnation Reembodiment Changing Forms Slash The Indestructibility of the Human Spirit Karma The Law of Cause and Effect The Doctrine of Hierarchies Reality has many levels through which we progress. The Doctrine of Swabhava, the essential nature of each organism. The Doctrine of Evolution, perhaps more accurately described as the Doctrine of Emanation. The Doctrine of the Two Paths, the Path of Immortality and the Path of Each One for Himself. Knowledge of the Self, also known as How the One Become the Many. The Seven Jewels of Wisdom are an attempt to define for the serious question of the elements of reality to allow us to self-consciously and harmoniously comprehend the entire universe and its operation. Perhaps an analogy is useful to conclude our series, when we swim we are most aware of what is above the water, for us this is reality, but beneath the water is another reality supporting us, an ocean of other being. We can swim on without any awareness until the time when we feel the curiosity to look what lies beneath the surface. Until we make that decision, we are only half awake as to who, what we really are above and below the surface of appearances http colon slash slash www.theosophy down under dot org slash library slash theosophical lectures slash the seven jewels of wisdom by Stephen Carey slash inspiration inspiration is the language of light which man uses to talk with God inspiration is that deep awareness of the consciousness of being which differentiates the genius or mystic from the being of average intelligence Inspiration in man is accompanied by an intense mental ecstasy which is characteristic of all who become intensely conscious of their closeness to God. He who attunes his heart to the messages of genius purifies himself. No impurity can there be in his heart for verily he then is in communion with the Holy One. Walter Russell, The Secret of Light, page 25. Consciousness is the foundational energy of perception. It is the basis upon which we ascension existing beings either evolve or devolve. Our improvement or degeneration is marked by the state or level of our consciousness. The more elevated or purified our level, the more refined and penetrating our perception. That is why the purest individuals in our histories have also been the wisest and most perceptive, capable of seeing not only into the human heart, but into other dimensions. Conversely, the more degenerated or impure our consciousness, the more limited and confined is our perception. That is why the most impure individuals are also the most short-sighted, foolish and dangerous. Art of the Initiate. Cosmic Consciousness. The Bible refers to cosmic conscious experience as the illumination or being in the light or in the spirit. Cosmic consciousness is the ultimate goal of all mankind. All will know it before the long journey of man is finished, but there are many in this new age just dawning who are ready for it in part, if not fully. Many desire it fully, but it is best that it come bit by bit for the complete severance is very dangerous. The ecstasy of this supreme experience is so great that one does not wish to come back. The power of severance of soul from body is within easy accomplishment, but to step back into the body is very difficult. The way to gradually attain cosmic consciousness is to intensify one's conscious awareness by much aloneness and companionship with God while manifesting Him in every moment and in every task of life. The deterrent to cosmic consciousness is the feeling that God is far away instead of being within, and that we can reach that far away God only through sources outside of ourselves. Walter Russell, The Secret of Light, page 2829. Unconsciousness. Unconsciousness is the father of addiction. Addictions are a chosen method to remain unconscious. Unconsciousness is also the mother of suicide. Source unknown might as well wake up. Use your intuition. Rosicrucians, planes of consciousness. All the world's a stage, poem by William Shakespeare. All the world's a stage. And all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. 
His axe being seven ages, http colon slash slash www.poemhunter.com slash poem slash all the world essay stage slash. The planes of consciousness, as life is the essence of spirit, so is consciousness the essence of life. Spirit is one, yet it manifests in many forms of life. Life is one, yet it manifests in many forms of consciousness. While the forms of manifested consciousness are numerable, consciousness manifests on seven planes, and these planes of consciousness are known as, 1. The plane of the elements. 2. The plane of the minerals. 3. The plane of the plants. 4. The plane of the animals. 5. The plane of the human. 6. The plane of the demigods. 7. The plane of the gods. Remember that with our physical senses alone, none of us can hope to reach beyond gross matter. Blavatsky, States of Consciousness, the Upanishads delineate three ordinary states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and dreamless sleep. Each is real, but each has a higher order of reality. For beyond these three, the Upanishads say, is the unit of state, called simply the fourth, Turiya. Entering this state is similar to waking up out of dream sleep, the individual passes from a lower level of reality to a higher one. As we're on Ed, Eknot, June 1, 2009. The Bhagavad Gita, Classics of Indian Spirituality, Kindle Locations 250-253. Eight and Ninth Worlds of the Hopi. The Hopi believe we are in the Fifth World and there are two more, the Silver and Bronze Age. Louis Hart states beyond these seven universes, each a great stage of development, lie two more beyond man's reach. The eight is the realm of Sachinang, who helped to create and still helps to maintain the other systems, and the ninth is the indefinable, incomprehensible domain of the one divine creator of all. From the Lost Star of Myth and Time, Walter Cruttenden, page 250. The Mayans. The Mayans believed in ages or suns. A new age or fifth sun was to begin December 21, 2012, a time when humanity begins to awaken in consciousness. Their calendar is associated with nine creation cycles which represent nine levels of consciousness or underworlds as symbolized by the Mayan pyramids. The Mayan calendar is a spiritual device that enables a greater understanding of the nature of conscious evolution. At our present stage of evolution there are only two more underworlds to go. The first, the galactic, essentially serves for preparation and unification. The second, the universal, is about actually attaining the enlightened state. With every new level of the nine-story cosmic pyramid, we are more truly being created and actually increasingly creating ourselves, in the image of the Creator. As the galactic underworld progresses, human beings will increasingly become aware of spiritual energies that have been hidden from them by the blindfolded consciousness of the planetary underworld. Carl Johann Kalamann, The Mayan Calendar and the Transformation of Consciousness, page 200-201. No pain, no gain. Enlightenment is a destructive process. It has nothing to do with becoming better or being happier. Enlightenment is the crumbling away of untruth. It's seeing through the facade of pretense. It's the complete eradication of everything we imagine to be true. The freedom of enlightenment means much more than the experience of love and peace. It means discovering a truth that will turn your view of self and life upside down. For one who is truly ready, this will be unimaginably liberating. But for one who is still clinging in any way, this will be extremely challenging indeed. How does one know if they are ready? One is ready when they are willing to be absolutely consumed, when they are willing to be fuel for a fire without end. Adyashanti, there is no coming to consciousness without pain. People will do anything, no matter how absurd, in order to avoid facing their own soul. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. Carl Jung, as the sun gets farther into the sign, or constellation, of Aquarius, men will become immensely wiser than they have been and it is to be hoped they will leave the written record of their achievements in science and art to show to future races their status of mind on every subject for the edification and enlightenment of coming races. Our ancestors were denied this great privilege, consequently their wisdom is only symbolized to us in a way that it is difficult to read and interpret correctly, yet we who have the key to their symbols can read accurately the truth they wish to convey, which stands out clearly to all capable of understanding and interpreting symbolism and correspondence correctly. History and nature repeat themselves in every cycle of time, therefore these forces and potentialities are natural to the sign through which the sun manifests. We can go backward or forward through the sun's zodiac and read correctly the history of the hoary past, as well as the present and future, by bearing in mind the sign and cycle and manifestation at any given period. When the proper time arrives, a work will be given to the world to prove to mankind the law of cycles. God is present in all ages.